Hello, and welcome to Purdue University School of Aviation and Transportation Technology. In this video, our Aviation Ambassadors will be taking you on a tour of our facilities here at the Purdue University Airport, located on Purdue University's main campus in West Lafayette, Indiana. Welcome to the Nicewanger Aviation Technology Building. To your left are our two main lecture halls, Nicewanger 157 and 149, both holding about 60 to 75 students. Most of your major specific classes will be located here at the airport, while some of your introductory level classes will be over on main campus. Above me and down the atrium, you'll see the flags of different countries from which we've had different students in the School of Aviation Transportation Technology. We currently have 64 different flags and add more every semester. Beneath the flags, you'll see two things hanging, hanging from the ceiling, an Envoy Embraer E-175 model and a drone from our Unmanned Aerial Systems program. The E-175 demonstrates strong company connections and partnerships we have here at Purdue, and the drone is retired from our UAS program, demonstrating some of the incredible technology our students work with on a daily basis. Behind you is the Boilermaker Market, which is a great place to pick up a quick snack between classes. It's open 24-7 and accepts dining dollars from campus meal plans, making it an affordable option for our on-campus students. Finally, the advising offices are located down the hall. All of our advisors are aviation specific and have an in-depth knowledge of our majors, courses, and lab requirements. Behind me is Nicewanger 145, a classroom and lab space primarily used by students in our unmanned aerial systems program to analyze data collected by drones. In this computer lab, students can make ortho mosaics, 3D models, volumetric analyses, cardiographically correct maps, and more. Students will also get access to other data sets and professional software that can be used for learning more about GIS applications. I'll be showing you the two test cells that we have here today at Purdue. In this one, we have a Continental TSIO 550 as well as a turboprop uh, PT6. And in the other one, we have a turbofan F109. Our students get the opportunity to work in both of these test cells. Specifically in AET, they'll get the opportunity to do analytics, run the engines, do checklists for operating them, and then our students also get great opportunity with local companies. One works in here called Swift Fuels. They do unleaded research for different fuel types, and they do different run-ups on the Continental engine, and that is directly going into the industry to help better improve the aviation world. Welcome to Comp 101, which is the hub for UAS operations here at Purdue. Labs and classes take place here and they are constantly adapting to the cutting edge industry. Some labs held here include soldering workshops, classes where students take drones apart piece by piece and put them back together, and students also code and develop software to use on drones. Lastly, we also learn CAD and 3D printing. Those 3D printing skills are used to print drone parts and design airframes. Of course, during labs, we also fly drones. Our fleet consists of small drones like the DJI Mavic, medium-sized drones like the DJI Matrice platform, and even a fully autonomous drone the size of a general aviation plane. While flying, we learn maneuvers, emergency response, and 3D scanning and mapping. Comp 101 is also the home of UAS Dispatch. Dispatch is a job opportunity for UAS students, and they check out drones to students to use in classes and labs. They also are in charge of maintaining and repairing drones. Finally, dispatch workers also make sure that they are, the drones are compliant with FAA regulations. The lab we are in now is the original brick hangar built in 1934 where Amelia Earhart stored her Lockheed Electra while she was a flight instructor at the university. In fact, if her plane was ever found, it technically belongs to Purdue. The aircraft you see in this hangar are three Cessna 152s, a Piper Tomahawk, a Cessna 310, and a Beechcraft Musketeer. So in this lab, AET students work on removing and reinstalling various components on the aircraft. And none of these aircraft are airworthy. They do not fly. They're solely for educational purposes. In AET, students spend their first five semesters working hands-on with aircraft to obtain their Airframe and Power Plant, or A&P, certificate, which allows them to work as an aircraft mechanic. And this opens up job opportunities in aircraft maintenance, uh, including in Hangar 6, where students can build maintenance experience on live aircraft during their time in school if they finish up that certification. This hands-on experience is how AET differs from the College of Engineering majors. This doesn't necessarily mean that you're limited to working in maintenance, but having that experience and having your A&P certificate opens up many new engineering roles in production and design. The three aircraft closest to us 
are used for entry-level courses in basic airframe maintenance, where students will perform tasks such as jacking up aircraft, rigging flight controls, doing wheel and brake maintenance, and taking off control surfaces, whereas the three aircraft on the far side of the hangar are used for upper-level classes that include conducting 100-hour and annual inspections. The lab also has a helicopter to teach students about rotorcraft. This room here is the hangar of the future. In here, students have the opportunity to get involved with industry-leading research. Oftentimes, the hangar of the future takes existing technologies such as VR, AR, 3D printing, robotics, and more, and researches how they can be applied to aviation. Companies and industry partners often visit the hangar of the future to apply our research to their companies and to request future projects. The hangar of the future research is frequently shaped by these company visits, which allows us to adapt to, follow, and even lead the industry. These visits can also lead to internships and post-graduation job offers for our AET students. During their time at Purdue, AET seniors complete an applied research project targeting needs in the aviation industry, as suggested by these companies who come and visit. Some of these current projects include a wing walker for large aircraft wing inspections, the use of virtual re reality and augmented reality for air and orbital vehicle maintenance, the applicability of 3D printing certain parts for temporary use, and the use of QR codes to, for part information on the G4 and the CRJ100. These, the goals of these capstone projects are to enable task airworthiness, safety, quality, and reliability assurance in technical operations. And these capstone projects often incorporate student user design profiles, human factors, hazard analysis, and cost estimates. So what we have out here is a Gulfstream G4, which was donated by Eli Lilly, an Indianapolis pharmaceutical company uh, that has many connections to Purdue. In fact, uh, one of their plants is just across the river and can be seen from the Niswanga ramp. Uh, this aircraft is no longer flown. It's just used by students in the AET program to learn more about maintaining large turbine aircraft. So during their time at Purdue, AET students will get to power the aircraft up, start the APU, operate some systems, and even start the engines. And by using this aircraft, students learn about systems such as hydraulics, fuel, electrical, and avionics. The other aircraft that we have out here is the Bombardier CRJ-100. This was donated by Comair, a former Delta connection carrier. And it's used for many similar purposes as the G4, but it also serves as a research test bed for many of the projects in the hangar of the future. The Purdue University Airport is easily accessible for all students. Freshmen with fewer than 30 credits are typically not allowed to have a car on campus, but sophomores and above can purchase a parking pass and park across the railroad tracks here at the airport. Many students also utilize Purdue's free campus bus system to get to and from the airport. Buses run all throughout the day and will take you to both the, the residential and the academic sides of campus in just a few minutes. This is how most students without cars get to and from the airport on a daily basis. Bikes are also very common across campus and many students use them to commute to and from the airport. Most residential ha halls are about 5 to 10 minute bike ride away, while the center of academic campus is about 10 to 15 minutes away. The airport is also walkable from campus, so many students choose to walk to the airport when the weather is nice. Many freshman dorms are under a mile from the airport, about halfway between us and academic buildings on campus, which are closer to a mile and a half from the airport. Welcome to the Terminal Building. As you walk in, the Aviation Technology Library is to your right. This is a quiet study space open to students during normal weekday hours, which provides computers, printers, textbooks, and other resources right here at the airport. The library also contains aeronautical charts, aircraft flight manuals, pilots operating handbooks, maintenance manuals, and more. This terminal was originally used for airline service, but is now used for academic purposes, including our engines lab, avionics lab, sheet metal lab, non-destructive testing lab, and various offices for airport management and professors. All airline service now leaves out of the new Amelia Earhart Terminal, which opened in August 2025. SkyWest Airlines, operating as United Express, operates daily flights from Chicago O'Hare International Airport on 50-seat CRJ-200 regional jets. The avionics lab is used for courses in aircraft electronics and avionics, teaching electrical wiring and troubleshooting. 
The avionics trainer allows students to test many components including GPS, navigation radios, and communication radios. Additionally, we have two transport category avionics simulators. The sheet metal lab allows students to work with shaping, bending, and cutting aircraft grade aluminum, which teaches basic principles of airframe repairs. Students get to build their own wing sections, which students get to take home at the end of the semester. This space we're in now is the engines lab. It is used primarily by AET students, but other students from other majors may also come into this lab to see aircraft engines up close as part of a class on piston and turbine engines, which most students take in their first or second, second semester here at, in the aviation program. On this side of the hangar, we have the reciprocating or piston engines. These are used for airframe and power plant training. Um, and during the class, students will get to take an engine apart and work on rebuilding it. A few of the engines can be taken outside and started by students at the end of the semester for valuable uh, training in just getting to see what happens to the engine when you do a mag check or when you adjust the idle mixture, idle speed, to see the engine in action. On this side of the hangar, we have the turbine or jet engines. These are used for upper level AET courses. And during these courses, students will get experience writing maintenance manuals, running a turboprop or turbo, turbofan engine through the test cell, and inspecting turbine engines. A few of the turbine engines that can be found in the hangar include the PT-6, which is one of the most common turboprop engines, the Pratt & Whitney uh, 4098, which is the largest engine we have in here, it's primarily installed on Boeing 777s. And fun fact about this engine is when they brought it in and set it down on the floor, it was so heavy that it cracked the floor all along there. So they had to take it back out again, set down a reinforced steel pad, and then set the engine down again. Uh, this specific engine was used by Pratt & Whitney for various testing, including uh, throwing frozen birds into the engine. The engine just on the other side of it is a CFM-56, which was donated by Southwest Airlines and formally installed on a Boeing 737. And this engine is one that is still commonly found out in industry. One final engine that we have in here, which is pretty special, is the Rolls-Royce Olympus, which is used on the Concorde supersonic airliner. And this is pretty special because uh, very few programs have a Concorde engine and it was brought to Purdue just in spring of 2024. Uh, cur curriculum is currently being developed for this engine to incorporate it into class classes. The final space we have in here is the mezzanine, uh, which contains propellers, magnetos, and carburetors for classes in which you take them apart, learn to examine their internal functions, how they work, and then rebuild them and put them back together. So hopping into the flight operation sides of things, we have Hangar 6 West. Starting your freshman year, you will be assigned a flight slot. This is a two hour block and it's three days a week, either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. These can start as early as 7.30 or 5.30, uh, depending on the time of year. When you first walk into 6 West, you'll head to dispatch. This is where you'll be assigned an aircraft and you'll complete your flight risk assessment tool to make sure that you're fit to fly. As you walk over to the ramp, you'll see lots of desks and offices. These desks are where instructors will conduct their discussions and their briefs. These offices are for our full-time staff, including our chief flight instructor, assistant chief flight instructor, and our scheduler. So now we're out here on our ramp. We have several different Piper Archers and Piper Seminoles to train. These are very stable and safe aircraft, which makes them great for learning how to fly. The maintenance on these aircraft is done by licensed a &P mechanics, and they're done in-house in either Hangar 6 West or 6. When we're not flying our aircraft, every night we tuck them into our hangars in either 5, 6, 6 West, or some of our T hangars. This protects them from the elements outside, and it makes for a really nice pre-flight in the morning in the wintertime. We fly out of a Class Delta airspace, which means that we have an aircraft control tower. These controllers are incredibly friendly and competent. They are all FAA certified controllers. Sometimes this is also used to train new controllers. So we're a huge proponent of safety here at Purdue. We have the, one of the first collegiate safety management systems, and we have a director of aviation safety. We have several aviation safety classes, as well as monthly safety meetings. 
This is where we'll discuss ongoing safety concerns and mitigations for within our system. So looking onto the simulator building, we have five Piper Archer simulators. These are advanced aviation training devices, and these are great for practicing procedures and emergencies. You can actually get your instrument currency on these for when that time comes, and it saves tons of time and money that would otherwise be spent in the aircraft. We have one Piper Seminole advanced aviation training device and it is used to practice single engine operations and instrument operations in a steam gauge aircraft. We have one Redbird crosswind trainer, and if your student is struggling with crosswind landings a little bit, then you can hop in there and practice. Now onto our turbine aircraft simulators, we have a Boeing 737 and an Airbus A320. These are both level five flight training devices, and inside they're almost identical to the real aircraft's flight deck, but they don't move. We also have a Hawker 900 XP. This is a level D full flight simulator, which is the highest certification by the FAA. And it's the same type of simulator that airlines and corporate operators use to train their pilots. The simulator moves and feels just like the real aircraft and it provides a fully immersive experience for these students. These turbine engine, these turbine simulators are a great way to learn how to fly a jet, but also they teach crew resource management and aeronautical decision making. Purdue is renowned for how well its students transition into the real flight world, and it's because we teach teamwork in these flight simulators. These simulators are free to use for any professional flight student, and it's a great way to maintain currency, whether it's an instrument or flight. Thank you for joining us on today's tour. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to our recruiting office at aviation at purdue.edu.